the simplest usable personal computer? Does it even exist? Does it make sense to think about it? It may sound like an interesting question, but the answer seems highly subjective. But what if we consider three different aspects here? What are possible system requirements? What about design complexity and prototyping build effort? Let's exclude any aspects concerning mass production here, for obvious reasons. How to specify system requirements for a simplest usable personal computer? What does usable even mean? I strongly disagree about this with my 14-year-old son. Looking back at computer history, people began considering computers usable at home with the microcomputer revolution in the mid-1970s. These were machines like the Apple I, with an 8-bit architecture, about 8 kb plus RAM, 1 MHz clock speed, the Comfort of 6502 or Z80 assembler, text-based I.O. and a tiny operating system stored in ROM to replace front panel LEDs and switches. That's at least something to get us going. Although the so-called mini-computers of the previous era had similar performance, they weren't quite as user-friendly with their 250 pounds of weight, blinking lights and bootloaders you had to toggle in manually. So we have a spec now, but why bothering minimizing design complexity? Is a simple design a valid goal in itself? There are ingeniously complex CPU designs that make a stunningly small number of logic gates do amazing things. Isn't that what we want? The lower the design complexity, the clearer the general principles stand out. This will make it easier to engage with the system, appreciate how computers work and help others understand it too. So to do the job, the simplest usable personal computer is better off having the simplest possible design. Sure, minimizing the effort of building a prototype will be a good thing, but this will depend on the technology we choose. Right away we can rule out otherwise interesting approaches like building everything from discrete transistors. Instead, if we work our way down from advanced technologies, for some of you an FPGA might be the go-to solution. But on the other hand, only few consider learning VHDL a simple task. Using the integrated processors of the microcomputer revolution, that is the MOS 6502 or Intel's 8080 or Xilog's Z80 would certainly suit well performance-wise, but their architectures are anything but simple. Their use was more driven by cost reduction anyway, and not primarily because of their unique performance. DAX PDP-8L from 1968 had a CPU of similar performance built from TTL chips. TTL would certainly give us full control over our CPU design. And today TTL chips are inexpensive, readily available in modern low-power 74HCXX variants, both in DIP and SMD packages, and easy to use on prototyping boards. So we have a winner here. Minimizing build effort now simply means design for lowest possible chip count. To summarize, we've worked out a requirement spec for our system. Let's meet these requirements with a design that has the lowest possible complexity and build a prototype with TTL chips using the lowest possible gate count. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Go give it a try! Spoiler alert, and to make a long story short, here is my take on it. Some of you following my other CPU design related videos may recognize parts of the minimal 8-bit CPU, but this is a different beast now. The architecture of the CPU itself and its instruction set are unchanged. But I got rid of the Arduino, responsible for keyboard readout, data upload and system clocking. Instead, it has its own clock oscillator now, running twice as fast as before and I've integrated a serial UART and a small ROM into the system. For building the TTL UART, I really would like to give James Sharman credit here, since it was his excellent miniseries about this topic that inspired me to move into this direction. So thank you James, you've pointed me to the missing part of the puzzle. There's a link to James' channel and his UART miniseries in the description of this video. The integration of all this into my existing minimal CPU design was a fascinating challenge. I even got file transfer to the CPU for free. Today I'm using this small USB to serial converter and a terminal emulation called TerraTerm to communicate with my system. 
I'm using 5 volts and ground from the USB port and crosswire the transmit and receive lines, that's all. Let me quickly plug it in and bring up TerraTerm. When I push the reset button down here, the system should boot straight up into its ROM memory monitor. Which it does, there it is. We can immediately interact with the system. Let's make it display a little help screen by jumping to address hex 270 and type R for run. As you can see, we can take a look at the memory content, write data to memory or use a memory filler program at address 200 to clear parts of the memory. Let's try that. If we enter 2000, we change the memory address we are observing to the start of RAM. 0 to 1 FFF is the 8K ROM area. Let's take a look at the following 128 bytes by typing dot 207F and hit enter. After power up, this is all just random data. We can clear up this mess by using the memory filler at address 200. Type run and the parameters 2000, 207F and we like to fill with 0. That's it. Let's take a look again. Now we have a nice clean RAM area. But our help screen says we can also play Tetris here. Let's jump to address 16E0. And yes, Tetris is running quite nicely in our terminal. Alright, this is looking good. Let's hit the reset button to return to our monitor and write some data to RAM. At address 2000, we can use the colon symbol to indicate that we want to input some data. Let's write something and take a look. All right, so we have written FF to the first four memory locations. In principle, this way we could input a program by hand, but it would be very tedious. I have written this little hello world program here on the left and I have an assembler that takes this as an input and outputs exactly the keys I would have to press to input this program manually. Let's see. Now we simply cut and paste this text into our terminal. And our system thinks we are just pressing keys. Upload completed. Let's run it. So that's as good as it gets today. In the next few videos we may dive a bit deeper into this system. But as I've pointed out earlier, except for the UART I.O. and the ROM, I have already described this architecture in detail in the video series about my minimal 8-bit CPU design. The link is in the description. As always, I hope you got something out of all this. Let me know in the comments what you think about the search for the simplest usable personal computer. Take care. Bye.